Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. You know, less is more is an often used, some might say overused expression, but it stands true in many aspects of watercolour painting. Well, recently I saw an amazing sunrise over South Cumbria where hills, trees and buildings appeared to rise mysteriously from a low-lying mist. Well, the scene was magical, but I couldn't do anything about it as I was travelling south on the M6 at the time, but the image stayed with me. So the demonstration that follows is a sort of a manifestation of that moment. I thought a lot about how mist reduces everything to its most simplified form and how that principle might best be put to good use. For a recent walk out, taking in the small village of Marrick in Swaledale seemed like a promising candidate. In the spirit of simplification, I've messed around with the subject a little bit and it could use some finesse. But here's how I got on. This is the village of Marrick in Swaledale, North Yorkshire, just a few miles away from where I live in Richmond. As you can see, it wasn't at all a misty day when I took the photograph, but I rather liked the arrangement of buildings and felt the scene would lend itself to a little transformation. Before going ahead with the watercolour, I've decided to draw myself a quick sketch. I say quick sketch, but clearly it wasn't quite as quick as this. I've speeded things up a little just to condense the process and give you an idea of how such a sketch might come together. A preliminary drawing in pencil like this is a great way to familiarise yourself with a subject. It enables me to focus on the things that are most important to me and discard those that are less important. It's a filtering process that helps me to reduce the whole thing down to manageable proportions. I'm mostly interested in the basic layout of the scene. How big are each of its elements and how do they relate to one another on the paper? Being monochromatic, the sketching process also enables me to identify the tonal values within the scene and where some of the key contrasts appear. If you're working from a photograph, then I would always recommend you draw yourself a preliminary drawing in pencil first. If nothing else, just to explore the compositional possibilities. It doesn't have to be anything spectacular. We're not talking exhibition quality sketches here. In fact, the only person it should mean anything to is yourself. Well, having familiarised myself with the scene, I'm now ready to start putting paint to paper. I'm going to begin by laying down an all over wet in wet wash. That means wetting the whole of the paper first with clean water. The first colour I'm going to add to the wash is lemon yellow. It's a slight departure from cadmium yellow, which is the yellow I more commonly use, but I don't want the scene to look too warm. An initial wash like this can be crucial to the whole painting. Essentially, because the wash is so large and sweeping, it's going to set the whole mood of the piece. The second colour I'm going to throw at it is raw sienna. Well, there's a rough image in my head that I'm trying to reproduce. Having said that, this is a wet in wet wash, which means it has a mind of its own. 
it's a good idea not to have too rigid an idea in your mind's eye of how things should turn out. A wet in wet wash is inherently unpredictable, so you should always be prepared to go with the flow. My wash has now dried, so now I'm starting to paint in the shape of the background hill. To give it some variation and suggest a little of its three-dimensional properties, I'm going to drop in some French ultramarine while it's still damp. It's a bit of a gamble, but then taking the odd gamble is when watercolour is at its most interesting. A certain amount of care must always be taken, of course. You don't want to do anything too rash. But if you're prepared to let the paint do some of the work for you, then the rewards can be well worth it. My primary goal for the scene is to create a mysterious misty look. To achieve that, I need to soften off the paint that I've just applied with a damp brush, then lightly dab at it with a piece of tissue to diffuse it and prevent any hard lines from developing. That's going to be a technique that I repeat often during this demonstration. You'll notice that having spent some time producing a preliminary pencil sketch, I've opted not to use any pencil in the final painting. The main reason for this is to try and keep things as loose as possible. At this point, although I have a rough idea of where I'm going with it, I have no idea how it's actually going to turn out. Choosing not to draw it out in pencil first increases the unpredictability of it. I'm painting the line of cottages with a light raw sienna. Crucially, I've reduced the cottages to their simplest forms blending them together into a single shape. Having no pencil lines as a guide encourages me to improvise as I go along, throwing in a few ambiguous shapes that don't necessarily mean anything at this point, but will hopefully become an essential ingredient of the overall impression. As before, I'm softening off the wash with a damp brush and diffusing its edges with a piece of tissue. For my next wash, I've chosen French Ultramarine. In watercolour, we work from light to dark. Overlaying transparent washes in this way is an efficient way to control that build-up of tones. As with the first wash, I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible and slightly ambiguous. And as before, I continue to soften the wash off along its bottom edge as I go. Misty Marrick is finally starting to take shape. Thank you. 
As I've already said, in watercolour we work from light to dark. As such, it's a good idea to keep things as light as possible for as long as possible, only moving on to the darker tones when the time is right. Moving forward then, I've mixed up a warm blue-grey from French Ultramarine Burnt Umber and a tiny amount of Alizarin Crimson. It's a medium mix, neither too light nor too dark, and one that I can increase the intensity of as required. It's worth remembering that all the light within a watercolour painting comes from the white of the paper. If it helps, think of it as a backlight. If you apply your paint too thickly, then it will prevent that backlight from shining through that's when things can start to go muddy.
I hope you enjoyed that and that it may have given you some ideas about how a similar reduction of information might be employed in your own watercolour projects. Until next time, take care.